Today I'm going to demonstrate how I would interpret this rustic doorway in pen and wash. I have chosen this scene due to the various elements within it. The grain of the wood, the hung tiles, the unusual glass of the window and the mottled stonework. Either permanent or non-permanent pens could be used. Both are equally effective. Today I'm going to use two non-permanent pens, a fine and a medium. I will also use a number um, eight Casaneo brush, synthetic brush, a 2B pencil to sketch it out and five colours. These are Winsor & Newton colours, transparent yellow, raw sienna, alizarin and crimson, scarlet lake and ultramarine blue. Here I will illustrate the difference between a fine nib and a medium nib, which is a lot bolder. When I apply water, because it's non-permanent, the ink will dissolve. It makes a lovely soft grey shade. When I mix a little colour into it, that adds to the effect. I commenced by just sketching the scene out in pencil, just very lightly and just very simple shapes as an indication of where I'm going to apply the ink. Just consider the proportions of the, of the door and it's a good idea also to just divide the door into half so that you can mirror this arched side on the other and also divide the door into four panels. I'm now going to start sketching with my fine pen. So just very loosely, so I'm going to hold my pen quite flexibly so that it isn't too, too tight. I'm going to just draw more of a sketchy, sketchy line. We've got a little lion's head on the doorway there. So just a loose impression. Now this is could be as tight or as loose as you as you wish. I quite like to work in a in a loose way and don't forget once the water is applied on top of um, the ink it will dis diffuse so very loose panels there then we've got the the hinges And if I was sitting outside actually sketching this scene, this is the way I would work in my little sketch pad. And sometimes the quicker you work, the better I find with, with ink. I'm just going to just put a suggestion of the foliage in because that's breaking over the the tiles and the stonework again very loosely And 
I'm going this side. It's almost like a brick step here and an indication of the mortar in between. Smaller texture, foliage there, and then we've got these lovely ferns breaking over. So I'm just sort of capturing the the essence of the foliage. This looks like a plant called Archimilla mollis, which has pretty shaped, quite structured leaves. So I'm just going to just taper off the foliage so it makes sort of a composition rather than it just being rigidly within a frame of the or as the photograph. Up in the window. It makes it easier to work actually if you break the line like this and Pen and wash with a non-permanent pen doesn't always lend itself to everything but I find with something quite rustic like this it um, is quite effective. I'm just going to put the, the door pull on and add the door handle. So I've got the main part of the door in, hint of the, the light. Again, just very loosely. I'm now going to add some of the detail, the hung tiles, the little bit of texture on the, the wall and the doorway. So again, just very, very loosely. I'm not sort of copying every detail and hopefully the painting will have you know, a little bit of character and movement to it. After all, old doorways, rustic doorways, nothing is perfect. Now I'm using my medium pen to just add a little stronger detail in shadowed areas.
just makes the the doorway a little bit bolder where I've got a shadow on this side of this panel. Let's put a little bit more strength. And you'll see the overall effect once I start putting water. to the pen keep it a stronger shadow on the lower hinge a bit more strength on door pull. A hint more strength in the foliage. Also in the grain. And also the tiles, just a hint of strength where one overlaps, forming a slight sort of shadow. dark shadow under the doorway there. Let's just put that on. I'm now going to apply a wash of colour. I'm going to start with the door. Looking at the photograph here, I've got a warm shade underneath. I'm going to make that by mixing alizarin crimson with raw sienna to make a warm orangey brown. I've also got a, a pinky key or mauvey brown, brown shade or so I've used, I've used ultramarine with alizarin crimson and again just add a little touch of raw sienna or yellow ochre to to grey 
the, the mauve. So I'm going to work wet on wet on dry. Start with the doorway with the warm. Brownie shade. And don't forget this is going to dissolve with the Just little touches, touches of white, white paper. It's going to just diffuse that slightly and add the the pinky mauve shade. So very loosely, touches of white coming through. I'm going to strengthen my purple. That again is alizarin crimson with ultramarine with a touch of this complementary yellow to neutralise it and make it less purpley or intense. So just a touch. Just going to sweep, sweep that into the damp paint. And then move on to the, the side panel. Again, a little bit of warmth. Just go for a little bit more strength there. orangey brown at the top and then again it's a very mauvey grey so just a little touch of that over this one. just leaving areas that are lighter and again on the right side And the base. I'm now going to begin the stone wall using some raw sienna. Again, wet on dry, just touches here and there. As you see, the the ink's just bleeding into it, creating a, a greyish shade. I've added just a little hot red to the to the yellow to add a little bit of warmth. Finally, a touch of, of mauve, again, alizarin crimson with ultramarine with a dash of raw sienna. The base is still damp, so it just softly diffuses. Then I'm going to start on the, the hung tiles. Hot red this time again. Scarlet Lake with raw sienna to make a lovely bold shade. And just some sweeping brush strokes, leaving areas of white. You'll note I'm not um, studiously filling in, just leaving touches of white here and there just to give an impression. A little transparent yellow with the red makes a slightly brighter shade and a 
I was using um, raw sienna, a bit more brightness there. Gone over the window sill, so that can just be removed with a piece of um, paper towel. A slightly um, subdued mauvey grey there. Just touching wet on wet onto the tiles to just give them a varied effect. Finally, a little bit of grey on the, the pathway. Quite fluid, wet on dry. Just vary the, sl the tone slightly, just mixing a slightly stronger shade. Starting with the window area, I'm putting in the warmer orangey-brown on the base and then the stronger grey on top, letting them just bleed together. Now I'm mixing the, the green for the foliage, a yellow green to begin with. Just uh, quickly letting it flow over the pen work. And I'm adding a little bit more ultramarine blue into the mix to make it um, cooler in shade. Just to vary the, the greens. Touch more of a blue-green, slightly stronger shade. Now the lion's head almost is a turquoisey colour, so I'm using a cerulean blue. I'm just going to put a just a touch, quick wash over it. Finally, I'm going to add the finishing touches. Just a little bit of a wash behind the the lantern. I'm mixing a slightly stronger mauve again, mauvey grey, and applying it over some of the terracotta orangey areas to give a bit more strength. And a touch more of the, the mauvey grey shade just in the shadowed area of the doorway. And a few downward brush, brush strokes. Just a hint here and there. 